These are not the right people to be storing and, and trying to protect secure data. If someone can have access for four years and they don't realize it, it's it's just almost it, it fundamentally says that they had the wrong security posture and they didn't care about their users' uh, security and privacy. Really, they were collecting an enormous amount of data that they, in many cases, didn't need to be holding for very long periods of time. And this data was out there on a legacy system and was compromised. So um, it's, it's an instance where you have uh, a hotel who's not in the business of cybersecurity, trying to securely store data, which they shouldn't be doing, and getting themselves into trouble. Um, they don't run a power plant to generate electricity because they don't have the competency for doing it. Uh, they shouldn't be trying to secure, secure and store all this very sensitive information over long periods of time that they don't actually need. So companies that are going and collecting massive amounts of user data, this should be viewed not as an asset where they can go and sell user privacy and make a few bucks, but it should be viewed as a potential liability. Because if an attacker goes in and compromises and steals this information, uh, not only will customers hopefully revolt and not want to stay at, at hotels and organizations that are not able to, to store that information, but some new laws and, uh, will have penalties uh, for organizations that have gone and had that data be leaked. So GDPR uh, and, you know, hopefully we'll see more legal action happen in the U.S. and other places that will cause uh, uh, organizations to be more cautious about the data that they store. Uh, it's very much the case that companies don't really care because they really haven't faced major, uh, major financial consequences. In fact, we've even had situations where um, the Ashley Madison hack, after that, they actually had more people sign up. It was almost like advertisement for the site. So uh, there are situations where you would assume there should be huge financial consequences, but unfortunately the laws in the United States are really lacking. Uh, the GDPR is a very positive step in the right direction, and I expect that we may see some financial consequences uh, coming out for data breaches in the future because of it. So uh, hopefully the U.S. can catch up. Well, they can outsource that. They can effectively uh, transfer that risk to an alternate party by having a party that specializes in managing and storing credit card information and other things like this. There's tons of different payment and processing vendors that would instead have given back to Marriott, given them back tokens that they could have used, and those tokens are not sensitive. Instead, they were foolish enough to store, even encrypted, they were foolish enough to store credit card information and now that information is potentially at risk depending on what other information the attackers were able to do if they're able to steal the encryption keys. So they just shouldn't have been keeping that stuff in-house. It's, it's, it's a very 101 uh, mistake to make. There's some data that they may have to keep for some very short period of time. So in some countries, uh, you're required for maybe up to a year or so to keep passport information so that you can file that along with tax information. Uh, but there's no reason to have passport information longer than that. There's no reason for them to keep information longer than is required for them to do so. Someone comes in and wants to talk about something for 10 minutes and then... The real place where you can make an effective difference other than doing the typical credit monitoring and other things like that, you can try to do after the fact. But ahead of time, you can ask them what information they actually need to have in order to go and provide you with um, you know, the service that they're meant to provide you. So a lot of cases, hotels do not actually require most of the things that are on the, the sign-in sheet. Like, I, I will not provide most of that information when I go to check into a hotel, and they still let me check in. Well, there, there's all sorts of different uh, fraudulent activities that you can launch given this information. Uh, in some cases, with a passport number and other things like that, you can open a bank account, you can um, use this as a way to get loans or uh, do other types of identity theft. So there's some very serious potential consequences from this. Um, but it's also, even if you only gave 
uh, information such as your phone number, your mailing address, other things like this, they can still go and call you and pretend to be from a bank or from another organization and, oh, you know, we want to just want to confirm you're a Joe at 123 Main Avenue and there's this problem with your bank, can you just confirm your security questions for us? Right, so they can use that information to go and launch other types of uh, uh, scams to attack and harm users. So everyone will need to be a lot more vigilant, given the fact that their data, you know, half a billion people's data is now potentially out there for attackers.